Come on, let's give the Lord some praise tonight, amen. Come on, he's the one that's worthy tonight, church. Come on, no patty cakes. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Come on, he's your redeemer, your strength, and your strong power. Come on, he is your way maker where there's seeming not to be a way. He is a rock in the middle of your storm. He's worthy tonight, church. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. I, uh, I'm so honored to be back with you tonight. I just, uh, I miss you when I don't get a chance to be here. And I just want to say thank you uh, for your continuation of prayers that continues to fuel the fire of what God is doing here in North Georgia. Uh, I was on the phone with Pastor Todd. And let me just say something to the pastors and leaders that are watching. If you have not connected with the ministerial uh, uh, ministry of Pastor Todd Smith, I, it's uh, Kingdom Ready, I believe. Is, is that the, what the terms for it? I don't know. I'm a part of it. I was on a Zoom meeting with Pastor Todd and the Lord spoke to me as clearly as I've ever heard the voice of the Lord. And it was concerning prayer from a, from a sermon that I've preached, that I've heard preached a thousand times when Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. I want you to understand what I heard the Holy Spirit say to me. He said, my house, the place I'm gonna move in and stay. There's a lot of people that are satisfied with a visitation. God don't want a visitation in this hour. He is looking for a permanent habitation. It don't leave when you leave this building. It don't leave when you leave a great anointed church service. It goes everywhere you go, in every place. You walk in a room and you carry the glory of God in that room. You understand, when you are a habitation, you don't escape the glory. It goes with you to Walmart. It follows you into the drugstore. It goes to work with you. It goes to your family dinner with you. Jesus don't heal just on special occasions. He is a healer 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Come on, he's not just a deliverer when somebody gifted preaches. He's a deliverer all the time. And he don't care whether it's in this church building or it's in the parking lot of your favorite shopping center. God's going to do what God's going to do if he's got a habitation that he can do it through. So when he said my house, he ain't talking about this building. He's talking about you and me. Somebody say me. And he said, the place that I choose to dwell will be called a house of prayer. Church, thank you that you didn't settle for a visitation, but you've made this a habitation. Thank you. Thank you for the dedication, the prayers, the relentless, for not giving up, for not drawing back. The Bible said God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Thank you for the diligence, church. Thank you, Pastor Todd and Karen. Thank you for your diligence. Thank you for leading an army of diligent prayer warriors, not only here in Dawsonville, Georgia, but around the world. Thank you for influencing Ranger, Georgia. Thank you for influencing West Kentucky, where we are almost every week in revival now for 87 weeks. We're still in revival there. God is sending revival around the nation. Amen. Because they're diligent pursuers of God in this house that have made this a house of prayer. Thank you for your devotion. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew tonight. I want to be brief, but I want to be precise tonight. I have a word, and then we're going to open up the waters in just a minute. I believe this is a right now word for the body of Christ. It may come a little different than what some of you may understand. Some of you may already know this. When you sit under Dr. Karen Smith, I assure you there is no doubt that those of can Caneo have heard this, but for those that have not, it is a revelation and a word that should spark faith in you like never before. Again, Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 13, the Bible said when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, others Elisha, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, speaking, speaking about Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Somebody say the key is the kingdom. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, I thank you for the grace and the anointing the gifting and the power of the Holy Spirit operative in this place right now. And God, I thank you that it operates in the frailty of this clay flesh tonight. God, I don't want to speak anything that whatever is being heralded from the throne of heaven right now, God. Thank you for your word and thank you that it's going to achieve everything that you desire for it to achieve. God, I thank you for the empowerment tonight of your body. God, raise them up, Father, a force to be reckoned with in this hour, God. Cause them to emerge the body of Christ that you died to make them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. First of all, I, I need you to understand that Jesus has just pulled his disciples out of a particular place where many miracles have happened. He's just, he's just multiplied the fishes and the loaves. They've just come into a, a miracle of abundancy. And, and you know, a lot of us want to camp out in the miracles of abundancy. I need to preach in here today. Everybody likes it good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Everybody li likes the 12 basket fulls that are running over, and we would love to make our count there. But Jesus pulls them out of a place of overflowing abundancy and takes them to Caesarea Philippi. Not only if you want to understand something, if there's going to be excess, church, you've got to understand it's also coming with persecution. The Bible tells us that whatsoever we forsake in this life, that God won't give it back just tenfold. He will give it back a hundredfold. But with that hundredfold return, the Bible said it's coming with persecution. So anytime that you're going to have an abundance of God, you're going to have to deal with the opposition. Everybody wants revival. Everybody wants an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but not everybody wants the persecution that comes with the abundance. You see, you got to understand that the older brother never got angry until there was a fatted calf killed. In other words, when excess comes, the religious set get angry. And the religious sect became angry with Jesus and began to tempt him before he went to Caesarea Philippi because there's always going to be an attack where there's an abundance. I need to preach in here today. When you're praying for more of God's spirit, when you're praying for more of the gifting, when you're praying for more of his face, when you're praying for God, I want your glory to reside in my life, you need to understand something. There's going to be a fight. You got to gear up for a fight. Jesus warned us, if they did these things to me, they're going to do them to you. If they call me of the devil, they're going to call you of the devil. When you stand up with the boldness and the overflow of the Holy Spirit, I promise you the devil's going to know you by name. And he'll, listen, listen, he'll know you by name. He won't have any idea who the seven sons of Sceva are, but he's going to know who you are because you're walking in the abundance of his anointing. My God, church, there's a price to be paid with the abundance. I want to know, is there a generation in this room that said, God, I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to fight the fight. I'm willing to go through whatever's got to be gone through for me to have everything that we're supposed to have. Yeah. My God. Woo. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me move on. And, and the Bible says he pulls them into Caesarea Philippi. Now, what you don't understand is that he pulled them out of abundance to one of the most wicked, vile cities in that entire region. This is not a religious epicenter of, of Judaism or even Christianity. This is an epicenter of every false god imaginable. That every Roman deity was represented on Mount Hermon exactly where Jesus had took his disciples. I'm going to preach it here tonight. Now, I need you to understand that where he took them that day before he asked them the question was, he took them to a city that was under Roman government, a place where there were three 
temples that had been built, now watch this, to Caesar Augustus. What most people don't understand is that Caesar Augustus was looked at by most people as a deity. He was looked at because of his governmental and political power as a deity, and they gave him the title Son of God. Oh, it got quiet in here. And Jesus takes them where these three temples were, and he asks them, who do you say that I am? The next thing is you must understand is there is another temple that is represented there. It is the temple of Pan. It's a cave, if you might. And it's a big open place where they, where they worship Pan, the Pan God. And I will give you an image of him on the screen right now. If you've ever seen this image right here, you've seen the man with the goat horns and the goat hind legs that played the that played the flute and all of the goats would follow him. Well that is Pan. This is the Pan God. And they worship Pan at this open cave. And there was water in that cave. And and Pan was literally a fertility God if you will. All of this originates back to Baal worship. I, I don't have time to get into the detail of it but I need you to understand the scenario of where Jesus is taking his disciples. Because he's about to make some profound statements to them that is going to literally change the concept of their thinking. And the Bible says that the first thing that he asked them in the environment. Now, if I had time, I would tell you there is more than these temples that were represented on Mount Hermon. There are several temples that are represented there. Just almost every Greek god was represented by an idol or a temple on Mount Hermon at this time. Jesus is standing in one of the greatest cesspools of idolatry on the face of the planet. And he turns to his disciples and he said, who do men say that I am? And there was a vast opinion that some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say you're Elisha, some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And the Bible said that he turned to them and said, who do you say that I am? Do you understand we live in a culture where there's a lot of opinion about who they think Jesus really is? Let, let, let me say that again. There's a lot of philosophies. There is a different version of Jesus being preached from most pulpits in America that are conflicting to what the Bible teaches. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can get your version of Jesus on any street corner you want to go to. When the Bible says beware, when one man will say here is the Christ and there is the Christ, be careful. They're not talking about a physical element of Christ. They're talking about the image that's being heralded from pulpits that are conflicting to what the scriptures teach is, is truth about Jesus. But even though the Bible gives us the, the vivid image of who Jesus truly is, even if you know what the Bible said, whatever your opinion of Jesus is, is who he is to you. Who do you say that Jesus is? You see, because whatever your understanding of Jesus is, that's what it is to you. Doesn't matter what the Bible says. You have settled for your own imagination or your own or your own understanding of who you think he is. But Peter in the middle of it said, I know who you are. Thou art the Christ the anointed one, the son of the living God. In other words, let me make it clear, Herod is not the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. But I want to preach that a little further tonight because tonight I don't care who you are. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what your circumstances are. I don't care what crack house you just came out of, what meth house you came out of. I don't care how many dollars a day worth of meth you're doing, how many pills you're popping every day, how many people you slept with, male or female yesterday. I don't care what the troubles are in your life. I don't care the financial situation you're in. I don't care what your health issue 
is. I don't care what the doctor said about it. I got news for you. There is one today that is greater than every dilemma that you're facing in your life. He's greater than cancer. He's greater than sugar diabetes. He's greater tonight than anything going on in your life. He's greater than your spouse's affair. He's greater than your drug habit. He's greater than the alcohol that you're bound to. He's greater than the hatred in your heart. I come to tell you there is nothing that the king of glory can't do in your life tonight. Brain tumors healed. Tourette's healed. My God, I want to preach in here today. ADHD healed tonight. Yeah, I want to preach mental disease, depression. Are you with me tonight? Anxiety tonight is healed in the name of Jesus. See, the question is, who do you say he is? Who do you say? Who do you say? Do you say that that habit's greater than the power of God to deliver you? Oh, I wish I had time. He's greater than your, he's greater than your porn addiction. He's greater than the lust in your life. My God, he's greater than the scars in your life from the rape or the molestation you've gone through. There's not a broken place in your life, in your emotions, in your heart, or in your mind that the king of glory cannot heal. Who do you say? Who do you say he is? Who? What's your opinion tonight of who he is? I need to speak to every addict in this room tonight. He's greater than your addiction. He don't need 12 steps, 13 steps, 24 steps. He don't even need one step. He'll deliver you right now on the spot, break the, break the shackles, break the chains, pull out the cravings, deliver you, and set you free. Ah, come on, I want to talk in here tonight. I don't care how demon possessed you are. I don't care how tormented in your mind is. I don't care what kind of demon he is. I don't care if it's Jezebel. I don't care if it's the spirit of Ahab. I don't care what his name is. I came to tell you greater is the son of God than every demon, every manner of rich crap. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater than your oppression. He's greater than the spiritual torment you're in tonight. He's greater. Somebody shout, he's greater. The question is, do you know it? You see, the problem you've got with the reason Jesus had to get them out of that religious environment. Get them out of a place where they could have settled in, in, in abundance. It's because religion will always magnify the problem instead of the answer. Mm -hmm. Religion always celebrates the God who was and the God who shall be. They talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They talk about the God of the sweet by and by. But I need to tell you real Christianity and real revelation talks about the God who is right now. A present help in a time of trouble. The lily in the valley. The rose of Sharon. My bright and morning star. My rock. My fortress. My shield. My deliverer. My healer. My great physician. My wonderful counselor. I'm talking about Jesus. He's my everything. Not later. Not tomorrow. Right now. Somebody shout right now. He said, I got to show you who I am right now. So he takes them to the mouth of the cave, to a huge platform where they worship this false deity. Are y'all hearing me? Surrounded by the worship of, of a false deity called government. Let me just deal with the goat God and let me deal with the political God at the same time. 
See, I don't want to be around somebody when I start talking about the kingdom of God and they start talking to me about Democrats and Republicans. I come to tell you tonight, there is one greater than the Democrats. There's one greater than the Republican. There's one greater than a vile, corrupt political system. He is the king of glory. I don't care what they vote on next week. My God still reigns. You act like the governments of the world control the governments of heaven. I got news for you, honey. They don't control. Mm -mm. That's why he's got the title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Ain't no king before him. Ain't no king after him. He is the king of glory. Woo. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about getting mine on right now. Watch this. So he takes them to this platform. Surrounded by every false deity known to mankind. In the worship of Pan, it was filled with sexual perversion. I'm not going to because the children in this building talk about the sexual perversion. But if you understand the word beastology, beastology, whatever they call it, I don't know because I'm not into all that. But just understand if you will study history, beastology, you will find out that there was every kind of immoral act that was happening on this platform known to mankind. There were sacrifices not only of goats and sheep, but there were sacrifices of children that were thrown into this cave where the fertility gods lived and, and hibernated in the winter and came out in the spring. And out of all the perversion and immorality and demon possession and immorality, corrupt government, you understand it was Herod the Great that erected these three temples to, to Caesar Augustus. Y'all with me? So one of the most wicked men in all of history is the one who erected these temples. So God said, I want to show you in the middle of the most corrupt, false government system, in the middle of the most pagan, demonized idol worship on the planet. What you don't know is that cave opening was called the gates of hell. See, when we think the gates of hell, we think it's just a holding realm of the dead. The gates of hell was the opening of that cave where all those demon gods were living. And he said, upon this rock, this revelation, Peter, that I am the Son of God, the revelation of who I am, that I'm greater than Caesar Augusta. I'm greater than every sickness. I'm greater than every pan god. I'm greater than Zeus. I'm greater than Jezebel. I'm greater than... Y'all don't want to hear me. I'm greater than the spirit of Ahab. I'm greater than the spirit of addiction. I'm greater than the spirit of depression. I'm greater than sickness. I'm greater than infirmity. I'm greater than every evil entity on the planet. Upon this revelation, the results are upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build it right in the face of every demon, right in the face of every bad government, right in the face of every evil authority, right in the face of the darkness. I'm going to build my church. 
and all of the forces of hell will not stop my building of the church. I'm gonna climb right in the face of every wicked witch, every warlock, and I'm gonna build my church. Right in the middle of bad government, I'm gonna build my church. Right in the middle of corruption, I'm gonna build my church. Right in the middle of attack of the Jezebel spirit, I'm gonna build my church. And you witch, you won't prevail. You warlock, you will not prevail. You, you demon, you will not prevail. You have no power over God's authority and ability to build his church right in your face. Right in the middle of crack town. Right in the middle of meth alley. Right in the darkest, most perverse, sex infested, community in all of Dawson County. I'm gonna build my church. Right in the middle of every armpit in America, I'm gonna build my church. It ain't no devil. Ain't no pits of hell, ain't no gates of hell, ain't no pan, ain't no Augustus, ain't no government gonna stop. Throw me off Facebook, I'm still gonna build the church. Do you hear me? Throw us off YouTube, we still gonna build the church. Ostracize us, persecute us, the church is still gonna be built. Y'all don't, don't wanna hear me preach. I gotta finish. Look. look. Communism has tried to stop China's church for decades upon decades upon decades. But the gates of communism have not prevailed against the building of his church. Just last week, a missionary told me, said, Bishop, the church in Iran is growing faster than it's ever grown. The church in Afghanistan is growing faster than it's ever grown before. It's underground. They drove them out of the public, but it's growing everywhere because the gates of hell shall not prevail. Whew. Stand with me all over the house. I'm about done. Look at me, church. Look at me. Upon the revelation of what he told Peter, of what Peter told him, he said, upon this understanding and revelation of information that I've just conveyed to you, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Y'all didn't get that, did you? upon what he told them, the authority that he told them they had, the power he told them they had in the face of all of they were standing in the middle of. He said, now with that information, I'm gonna give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. I just wonder if there are some people in Dawsonville, Georgia tonight, some people watching online on the ISN network that know who he is, that he can give you the keys to the kingdom. Lay your heads with me tonight. In this room right now, there are men and women that are tormented. Some of you have been tormented by the demons of addiction. Some of you have opened yourself up to witchcraft. You've opened yourself up to spirits of darkness. Every kind of perversion has beat you, robbed from you, blinded you, discouraged you disappointed you, left you defeated mentally, emotionally, and made you feel hopeless. There's no way out. 
You've tried religion. You've tried churches. You've tried methods. You've tried steps. You've tried prayer from people. But nothing has worked for you. And the reason it didn't work for you is because you were going based off of another person's opinion of who he is. Tonight, you got to know in your heart that he is greater than what's tried to oppress you. He's greater than whatever's tried to possess you. He's greater than whatever has held you captive. Luke 4.18 said he came to set the captive free. He came to heal the brokenhearted, and he came to set at liberty those who have been oppressed. And I don't care how bound you are. I don't care how oppressed you've been. I don't care what the doctor's report against you has been. I come to tell you that Jesus is greater and tonight is the night of your healing, your deliverance, and your freedom. Some of you in this room have opened yourself up to demons. When you opened yourself up to demons, they took a lot more out of your life than you bargained for. And some of you have wanted free from those demons. Some of you wanted delivered from those demons. Some of you have gone through deliverance processes. Some of you have gone through all kind of things to try to get rid of the demons in your head that torment you, that keep you awake at night, that lie to you, that steal from you thoughts of joy, faith, and freedom. It steals it by telling you you're worthless. You'll never get free. I own you is what he says. But I come to tell you, right in the face of them demons, tonight, the king of glory is going to bind every demon. He's going to bind everything that incarcerates you. And you're going to be loosed. Loosed to live free of every demon. Loosed to live free of every addiction. Loosed to live free of depression tonight. With every head bowed, people praying all over this building, I'm going to count to three. And I want every person in this room who said, Lance, I got to get free. I'm bound. I don't care what you're bound by. I don't care if it's methamphetamines. I don't care if it's oxy. I don't care if it's heroin. I don't care what it is. If tonight you're bound by that thing and it's holding you captive, and you don't know how to get free, but tonight you believe that the Son of God is greater than what binds you, and you want to be free in just a moment, I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and raise it high. Some of you are bound by demons in this room. You've been demonically possessed. Some of you have been demonically oppressed. It doesn't matter whether you're oppressed or, 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 or possessed, but when the demons operate in your life, it creates fear. It creates anxiety. It creates it creates incompetence it creates in you insecurities oh I hear the Lord and it torments you day and night some of you opens yourself up invited them in I don't care how they got there I just know how they're leaving some of you live under great oppression every day Jesus came to set you free. Who do you say he is today? Who do you say Jesus is? As every head's bowed and people are praying all over this room, if you're ready to get free tonight, I'm going to ask you to be bold. I'm going to ask you with courage and courageousness at the count of three to raise your hand as high as you can. Listen, it's not time for you to be ashamed. It's not time for you today to say, well, what are people going to say? Who cares what they say if you get set free? See, the problem is religion said it's done undercover. Jesus said if you're going to do it, do it openly. When he cast out the demons from the man who had over 3,000 demons, he didn't do it in private. He did it publicly. Tonight, God's going to deliver you publicly. So every demon-possessed person that sees tonight will have hope there's deliverance. That every person bound by an addiction, bound by oppression, bound by depression, bound by anxieties and infirmities will know tonight that there is power to be liberated. 
If you're in this room tonight and you're ready to be free, you feel the Holy Ghost rising up inside of you saying, Jesus is greater than my bondage. I'm going to ask you at the count of three to raise your hand, raise it high. Are you ready right now? One, two, three. Raise them high. Raise them high all over the house. Raise them high. Raise them high. Raise them high. Hold them there. Hold them there. I want every one of you men and women to raise your hand right now as quickly as you can. I want you to get out of your seats and get to this altar right now. Come on, come on, come on. If you got to run, run. If you got to jog, jog. I don't care. Just move as fast as you can right now because the enemy is warring for your soul. He's warring to keep you bound. Come on, there's others. Come on, come on, come on. All over the building. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, all over the building. We're going to pray right now. Get ready. We're going to pray. Come on, there's others. You need to come. They're still coming. Come on, pray, church. I need intercessors. Where are my intercessors at tonight? My God, I don't know about you, but this is why we do what we do. This is the very reason we wake up and get out of bed and breathe oxygen every day for what's standing in this altar right now. You understand this is the reason that God's having revival in the middle of our nation, that every bound and every afflicted person is going to be made whole tonight, right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Whew. Come on, anybody else? Come on, come on, quickly. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Come on. I want you to look up. Church, let me tell you why I knew what God was going to do tonight. Three times in almost five years, the Lord spoke to me and showed me the entire service from start to finish. Tonight was one of those nights. I told Pastor Todd coming up on the platform earlier tonight before church, before church began, I said there'll be mass deliverances tonight in the house. Did I tell you? Did I tell you? You understand? Every spirit of infirmity tonight is going to leave. Every demon spirit is going to leave. Every addiction is going to leave tonight. Depression is going to leave tonight. Every spirit of affliction and infirmity is going to leave in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands all over the building. Father, by the power and authority given us in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demon to leave. I command every unclean spirit to go right now by the authority of Jesus' name. I command every unclean spirit, every spirit of infirmity, you leave everybody right now in the name of Jesus. I break the power of addiction. I break the demon of addiction off of your life in the name of Jesus. You are free right now. You are liberated right now. Depression is leaving in the name of Jesus. Anxiety is leaving in the name of Jesus. Unclean spirits go in the name of Jesus. Spirits of infirmity leave in the name of Jesus. Right now, go, 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 go. Go, 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 in the name of Jesus. Go, go. Every unclean spirit, go right now in the name of Jesus. Every unclean spirit, leave right now. Every spirit of oppression, every spirit of bondage, you've got to go in the name of Jesus. I command you, go, 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 go. Go in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Go in the name of Jesus. Go, go.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Continue to minister, Bishop. What a word tonight. What a word, what a word, what a word, what a word. If you have letter A tonight, letter A, as Bishop continues to minister, we're continuing to pray for people at the altar, our prayer and altar team. We're going to ask you to come and make your way, navigate your way through this crowd right here. This is Vince. You're going to come right toward him. If you have letter A, letter A, come right now. Come right now. Letter A. Letter A, moving toward baptisms. Up these steps over here. Up over here, guys. Come around. Thank you. To my right, to your far left. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Letter B will be called shortly. Letter B will be called shortly. So you're going to watch that on the screen right here. But we're going to be praying for people all night, as long as it takes. If you need prayer, our altar team is here. Right? Bishop, have you praying for people? Fire of God is here. How many of you enjoyed what God's already done tonight? Come on now, give him glory. We're about to move into our baptisms of fire. I want you to pray with us, but we're ministering here at the altar. Bishop, bless you, my friend. What a word, what a word, what a word. If you're in this altar tonight, I want to pray one more time. I want you to lift your hands and surrender. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the death and the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you that the Son of God right now, in all of his power and all of his glory, is moving supernaturally in every man and every woman right now. That God, that every infirmity is healed, every sin is forgiven. God, that tonight, God, the bondages of the enemy are being broken in the name of Jesus. That God, right now, every demon's fleeing, every spirit of infirmity is being cast off. Every addiction is broken right now by the authority of Jesus' name. Thank you for open hearts that are receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Thank you for the miracle of regeneration for men and women being born again right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The altar workers are gonna to continue to pray and minister to all those in the altars tonight. Please continue to stay in an atmosphere of worship as they come and prepare for baptism. <laughs> 